Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to Moscow. Now I'm going to get right into the meat and potatoes of this video. I'm going to take you for a walk around a Russian typical supermarket. Now the particular brand we want to go to is right behind me and it's Russian owned. It's not French, it's not German, it's a Russian owned supermarket so let's go check it out. It's very hard to get a perspective of how big this supermarket is. It's actually in a shopping center, which has got over 300 stores inside. Huge shopping center. And just panning around and taking a look all the way down off in the distance at all of the checkouts. It's a big place. And the fact that it's Russian owned, even better. I do want to try to find a few items to look at prices. Walking inside, one thing they've got right in the entrance is a nice cafe. And you can sit down and have tea, coffee, sandwich. And they've got some pastries right in the fridges here. And they've got even thin crust pizza by the slice. So you can actually just have a little bit of a break from shopping and sit down right here at the cafe in the entrance, which is super nice. The one thing that's noticeable in a lot of Russian supermarkets, particularly bigger ones, is the fact when you walk in, there isn't the fruit and vegetables right here at the entrance. It's actually kids stuff. So clothes, all the baby food, all of the personal care items for babies. And there's not the traditional fruit and vegetables that you'd be used to in any supermarket in the world. Lots of promotional items right here at the front. Of course, lots of sweets, lots of snacks. Good Mix is meant to be the new Kit Kat. Now it's pretty close, but it's still not Kit Kat. It is only 36 rubles, mind you. As a point of reference, roughly today, literally as I'm filming this, the a ruble against the US dollar is 98 rubles to one dollar. And then to the euro, it's a little bit over 100. So I'm gonna use 100 as a benchmark. So 100 rubles is one dollar. So if you look at some of the prices on the signs, just move the decimal point over, and I will quote quite a lot of the prices in US dollars. I know it's not everybody's currency, but it's an easy way to reference the prices. There is actually a list put out by the government of socially important food items and supermarkets should keep the price as low as possible and that means that people even on smaller salaries can still afford the basic food products and be able to cook food no matter the prices now a bottle of cooking oil 94 cents again if we go by 100 rubles to a dollar this is just a few cents under one dollar for a bottle of cooking oil. I didn't really come into this supermarket to buy myself a barbecue, but they do have a small outdoor section. Get yourself a table and a palm tree as well. And then Kacha is the very well-known German brand of the pressure washers. If anybody follows me on Telegram, there's a pretty fierce back and forward conversation right now about school supplies and particularly from a lot of people in the group who are not from Russia and somebody suggested I need to do a standalone video about the price of school supplies being that the kids went back to school in Russia a few days ago and in Europe they go back next week but the very basic uh, exercise book is three and a half cents these are the staple item I think in most schools there's much thicker ones here for 24 cents. And then this whole section has got all the different brands of school supplies. Lots of exercise books. There's also school bags back there. Now this isn't particularly big. There is a few other hypermarkets that have got entire build outs. So I might have to do a video on that. I'm fairly sure every supermarket I go to, this guy on his pressure washer driving around is following me and he's in every single store that I go to I don't think it's the same guy but pretty close 
If you want watermelon right now, they've got some, I would say medium sized ones. They get a lot bigger if you buy them from the markets. But they're right now 20 cents a kilo for watermelons. This is very much melon season right now, so they're in abundance. Got all the classic fruits and vegetables. Apples vary a lot in price in Russia, depending on the type that you want. It's a dollar 20 a kilo. Now there is probably 15 different types of apples. So it's hard for even me to decide which ones to buy. And we've got some on sale here for a dollar a kilo. One of the most famous vegetables to make soups is beetroot, 23 cents a kilo. And we've got onions, plenty of types of onions. Now a bag of onions is 50 cents for a bag of onions. So there he is again. He's absolutely following me. Cabbages are 30 cents a kilo. You can choose what size you want. So there's medium size and then there's some larger ones back there. This is more than likely the more classic onions. 28 cents a kilo. And you take all of the skins off right there. And I've talked about this quite a few times about the way that they present the carrots and potatoes. The unwashed carrots, uh, 30 cents a kilo. And then the potatoes are 50 cents a kilo. I'm not sure if that's for the whole bag. I think that's for the bag is 50 cents. This store has a very nice seafood selection. This is all the packaged seafood that's uh, brought to the store. And then over on this side, they've got the smoked fish and the dried fish, if you want that kind of fish. And then they've got fresh fish right here. So they've got a fishmonger that actually does all of the filleting for you. So you can take them home yourself as they are, or you can get them to fill it for you right at the store. There's salmon. Not too sure any of the varieties of fish. They do have an aquarium back here, but there is only a couple of fish swimming around. Then we come to the butchers and the meat section and lots of people wanting to get meats. More than likely a lot of people are going to have barbecues today or tomorrow. So they want to get some fresh meats. The butchers back there with all the different cuts. So these are all prepared and cut in store. So these are all brought to the store, generally in whole sides of meat and then they're cut down. There's chicken right there. And then they do actually have a packaged meat section right here. There's chicken on one side then meats on the other. Lots of choices. It's really handy too in these stores, the way they lay out the shops. So they put even the finishing sauces and even some wine right by the meats to give you a good suggestion of what you should buy all at the same time. The other thing they've got with their meats here is they've got a different brand of meats, which is called Miratog, which is a supermarket chain in Russia that specializes in meats. So they're actually using another company's brand and selling it in the supermarkets. Where I live in Moscow region, we've actually got one of these supermarkets within five minutes of my house. So we quite often go there and buy nice cuts of meat. But you can actually buy them in this supermarket. They also have a really nice selection of ready-made foods. So if you want to buy something and take it home, this is packaged by 100 gram weight. So you can choose what you like. They'll put it in containers, like you see back here. And you take it home, put it in a plate, serve it to your wife, and she'll never know that you didn't cook it yourself as long as you get rid of the packaging ahead of time. It is a little bit later on in the afternoon that I'm filming this, but they also have a cafe inside the middle of the store. Now they've got it closed at the moment, so they don't open the entire trading hours, but 
you can sit here and relax and get yourself a snack or a cake and have a drink and you'd be able to buy yourself coffee right here you can also buy the prepared food from the other section and purchase it and sit right here and have lunch right in the supermarket I really hope you enjoy this supermarket walk around I know I get lots and lots of comments about doing supermarket videos and a lot of people like to watch them and a lot of people like to compare them to where they live and the difference is the good thing with this store is it's a Russian owned supermarket chain and OK has got stores all over Russia they don't have one where I live unfortunately so I've got to travel a fair distance to come out here to come to this have a look at all the different salamis and hams that they've got literally hundreds of them you can choose as many as you like and then all the cheeses as well lots of choices of cheese these are cheese by weight here so they'll actually cut from a block of cheese whatever size that you like well they've got some already prepared lots of choices and then we come around to the dairy section and I want to find a few items and we can check some prices hopefully you can see there's people in here shopping people pulling the baskets around I have talked a lot about the different types of baskets that people use these smaller hand baskets that are very very popular where a lot of people don't have cars they're going to catch the bus or the metro home from here so a lot of people won't over shop and just buy a small amount that they can carry in a couple of bags here is the sour creams and yogurts there is a very wide selection of milks that you can get in a Russian supermarket and there's also different sour milks as well now the milk that I normally buy if I'm going to get fresh bottled milk is the one right here two and a half percent this is 87 cents for 950 milliliters so a lot of stuff now we probably know that from wherever you live not everything's necessarily a liter anymore and the prices haven't changed but the size of the bottle has this store has its own in-house bakery it's not nearly as big as the one at the Globus hypermarkets but they do make uh, pastries and bread in the store and the ones that you can get here you can buy individually there's different savory ones and pastry ones and then the bakery is just behind the walls here it's a little bit hard to see again with it being a little bit later in the day they look like they've done for the day for their baking and these are the different breads so a fairly classic loaf of bread these are unsliced is 40 cents for a pretty normal bread there's also some of the different brown breads and fancy breads and then we come down even to cupcakes you can get cupcakes here you can get them in a pack of three I think for a dollar thirty I don't come to this store uh, very often because it's not where I live although it's a typical supermarket the typical one that I go to is Globus that's the one that's immediately where I live and the easiest one to shop at but I like the fact this is Russian owned these are the breads that are not made in the store so they'll be made at a bakery somewhere in Moscow region and these are actually half loaves so it's 44 cents for a half loaf of bread much easier to buy we buy them like this a lot because we know we're not going to eat a loaf of bread in whatever time frame that's marked on the packaging the one thing they always do is they put the cakes right across from the bakery in the bread section so if you want to go around to somebody's house bring them a nice cake three dollars or four dollars fifty you show up at somebody's house and you're good to go for the afternoon there's a lot of choices of cakes here they vary from about three dollars to six dollars depending on the type that you like the store also has a really nice wine and alcohol section one thing that's really neat is how they've changed the floor covering from the normal tiles to the wood finish they've also put nice lighting in and I know that doesn't necessarily 
equate to more sales, but definitely puts you in a mood to shop more. And the selection of the wines and champagnes. We've got glassware right there as well. And then as we move along, they've got all of the spirits and the liqueurs, vodkas, and they have one side of the aisle here only for vodkas. There is a big price fluctuation in vodka as well. It's not necessarily all cheap, but you know, it's all very reasonably priced. If you want a half liter of Stolly, $3.65. Again, you can buy most things in all sizes, not really the traditional sizes uh, that they have in Russian stores. So they go from little mini bottles up to any size you like. After the alcohol section, there is the beer. And they have a very nice selection of beer as well. The one thing that they have in this store as well is they've got tap beer. So you can actually have the staff member tap you a liter or a liter and a half of beer fresh from the keg. So you just choose which one you like there from the taps and the staff will give you a bottle to take home. It's essentially in a plastic container, uh, not too dissimilar from these dark ones in the fridge right here. And then it's uh, gas and tapped uh, with the lid right on it for you to drink it fresh at home. The opposite entrance from where I walked in is all of the homeware items and everything for your kitchen and for cooking. They've got small appliances. This shopping center also has five other electronic stores that you could go to beyond just buying it here at the supermarket. If you're implied to buy it all in one place, you can get it here. This is the far end of the dairy with all the mayonnaise. And how many choices of mayonnaise would you like? There's not just a few. And then they've got the long life milk. Let me see if I can spot the one that we buy. Yeah, it's right here in front. That's nice and easy. It's 87 rubles for the 950. 87 cents. If you want the in-store brand right here, it's 80 cents. So you do have a choice over the branded milk or the uh, store brand. Uh, Parmalat, if you want, is a $1.11. They also have Ulpro here, which is $2.15. These Parmalat and Ulpro brands, are they not meant to be not in Russia? They seem like there's a lot of them on the shelf. The one thing that has gone up in price and it's quite noticeable is butter. There is a lot of choices of butters of course and if you want to feel like you're spending less money just buy a smaller package of it but if you want something kind of normal size they don't come in containers either they come in this foil so three dollars for 450 grams there is quite a lot of choices depending on the brand that you like or the type of butter. Frozen food isn't really a thing in Russia versus different fresh foods. So you'll see here the frozen section is very limited to fruits, some vegetables, ice creams, and everybody's favorite frozen food, chicken nuggets. So there is very limited, considering the size of this store, very limited uh, area taken up by frozen foods. Of course, with the amount of fresh food that you can buy here, why would you want frozen? This supermarket chain has a lot of in-house products or private label products. It's something that they're trying to expand and make more accessible by having more reasonable prices. There's peanut butter here, $2 a jar. If you want some chocolate spreads, so they're trying to bring down the prices by having house brands. And really most of these are actually manufactured by the brand uh, brands themselves in Russia and label them only for the supermarket. I've come down the chocolate aisle here. 
This is always dangerous. So walk down. Mars bar max. This bigger Mars bar, 50 cents. Now I don't think they're very socially responsible food items, but sometimes we need some chocolate. I know we use this at home a lot, Domestos. This is the larger one and a half liter bottle and it's $2.30 for the bigger Domestos. Anybody else use this brand? I think it's very famous around the world. More chocolate and the bar chocolate on this side. Just to give you an idea, this is the brand that I always buy. It's 60 rubles here. Now if I can get it on special, 51 or 52 rubles. And that's going to vary from store to store. The prices quite a lot. Lots of Milka. If that's what you like. They've even got the Cadbury's in this store as well. Which, this is the imported Cadbury's. This is not the domestic one. And you can tell that by looking on the back here. The label, with this white label, is the one that's when it's imported. So the label it's from the manufacturing is the domestic one for that country then they put the russian ingredients on a separate sticker but you can get yourself cadbury's in russia still teas and coffee i just noticed as well they've got a different feel to this part of the store also and they've also got this wooden ceiling in place and they've changed the lighting so they're really trying to entice us to shop here in the coffee and tea section. Lots of choices of this as well. And they even put some candy and sweets in the middle. So there's more than enough choices. I think for the teas, it's nearly impossible to compare the prices. Most of them are uh, between about 60 cents and a dollar. You can safely buy probably half of the aisle for under one dollar equivalently it's just down to the different flavors of teas that you might like but there's a lot to choose from but mostly under one dollar for a box of tea <laughs> so many choices we have an entire cupboard at home just of different teas my wife seems to find a new flavor every time we come to the store this is the cereal aisle and most of it's taken up by oats and mueslis and porridges uh, versus the sugary normal cereal that's in the rest of the world beyond Russia. My wife has this brand, I'm pretty sure it is, of the oats. 72 cents for a 450 gram package. We don't have any of these sweet cereals at home. This is actually some of the health food items on this side. And we've got lots of different choices. It's not the aisle that I shop in, but I've got to show it. This is the very classic package of flour. This is 88 cents for two kilograms. This is actually on the end of the aisle, but it's pretty much the most recognized brand that you can buy. The pasta aisle has lots of choices as well. These vary quite a fair bit in price. The house brand is 53 cents for a package. And then if you want some of the branded ones, 75 cents. And Barilla is 75 cents for most of them. Now this has got the yellow special sign right here. You can go to a different store and still find it for less than 100 rubles. Uh, just go to a couple of different shops and compare and then if you want the fancier pastas there's also those but most of them are under a dollar for a package of pasta I never notice until I walk around the store like this and walk a little bit slower around how many different types of the one product there are and rice is a good example of that there is a lot of types of rice uh, if you want the house brand 78 cents this is 800 grams it's very interesting how a lot of them aren't traditional one kilo packagings there's quite a few choices of rice i never knew 
there is this many. And here is the instant noodles and the ingredients to make soups. If you want to get these ones where you just put the boiling water into the noodles, there's a few different choices. Dosarak is probably the most famous one. The price of this has gone up definitely in the last year. 65 cents for Dosarak. You could get this for as low as 40 rubles or even lower if you really shopped around. So the price of Dosarak has gone up a lot. Coming around to more cooking items. We have salt here. This comes in quite a few different sizes also. The one in the bag, 37 cents. Now the one I know we've got at home is one of these two. And that's 65 cents. I think even this much salt you wouldn't use in a lot of months. There is lots of different finishing sauces here, different herbs and spices if you want to do a cooking. These are the different sachets. A lot of herbs come in packaging like this as well. It varies. Most of it's under a dollar for a package. Some of them down to 22 cents, 50 cents, 40 cents. It's all very reasonably priced. We use some of these when we do different types of chicken or pork in the oven. And then there's all the different baking supplies. We talked about flour already. And we've got sugar over here. Sugar comes in lots of sizes also. The five kilo one seems to be the most uh, displayed. So five kilos, three dollars and forty cents for five kilos. I know we use these cubed ones at home, but the smaller one kilo bag is 68 cents. Is there a need for this many types of sugar? In this store they've got the eggs in the fridge. And depending on the store you go to, they're either in or out of the fridge. There seems to be a bit of a mixed answer that people put in the comments. Let me know, is it in the fridge where you live or not? The eggs don't vary too much in price. The home brand is 90 cents if you want the pack of the regular eggs. Now the eggs in the stores in Russia come in a box of 10. Uh, where we live in Australia, it's in a box with a dozen. So uh, let me know if that really is a factor. And there's also the ones that are 20 eggs down here. That's $1.74 for 20. So it's really just how many you want. Most of the 10 packaged eggs are under a dollar for a box. Some of the even fancy ones are still not more than a dollar for a pack of 10 eggs. Cooking oils I showed right at the beginning of the video. And there's a few more choices here. Now the price is a smaller one, 75 cents. Pretty sure this is the one we use at home. If I'm not mistaken, $1.30. There isn't any under 100 rubles here, depending on the size that you want though. Now you could go and shop somewhere else. Maybe you've got a store close to where you live where you could find prices a little bit less. It will just vary from store to store. I did actually prepare a list of all the items that I wanted to show and find in the store. And I've pretty much covered all of it except the toilet paper. So I just need to find that. And that top 10 food items I've covered in this video, I think. One thing I've noticed in the pet food aisle is that there's no canned pet food. In Australia, that was pretty much the normal way that pet food was sold. Here in Russia, it's in these sachets. And of course, for dogs with the biscuits, they come in these big giant bags. But the cat food takes up a lot more of the store because more people have cats in Russia than dogs, mostly because of the apartment living. You're looking at 20 cents for the sachet right there. Uh, 29 cents for another brand, 34 cents. So you have a cat who's very particular, only likes one brand. 
or do you just buy the one that's on special? That might be an interesting question to get everybody's response. I found the toilet paper aisle and I thought the easiest way to do this is just to show the one that I buy and it's a little bit easier to make the comparison. If you really don't have the money for toilet paper, nine cents is this stuff right here. If you go to some public toilets in Russia, that's the one they've got on the roll. You don't really want it, but it's the one they have. Now, the one that I buy is Ziwa, and this is the 12 pack, which is $3.00 and nine cents. Now I won't buy that at a store like this because I'd have to carry it across Moscow to go home. So I'll buy it at the local shop where I live and find that same type. And usually within a few rubles or so, it's not too different. Here's the other Ziwa. This is the one. The Ziwa Deluxe is 180 rubles. So a dollar 80. That's for the eight rolls. Um, yeah, there's a lot of choices of toilet paper. One thing that's interesting there, that's the store brand and it's $1.90. So it's actually 10 cents more for the store brand than it is for the name brand toilet roll. It's interesting also in the personal care item that they've got the different tiles also and different lighting for all of the Things like shampoos and deodorants, toothpaste. They really are setting the mood for your shopping as you walk around. And they like to really pair things together so that you find one item and find another quite easily. There is also lots and lots of choices of washing powders in the store. These bagged ones. I think most people know Tide. So the three kilo one is five dollars forty for three kilos so you can get smaller packaging again you can buy a smaller amount and pay a less uh, amount of money but it's you know it's still going to work out the same if you buy the bigger ones i know my wife buys this brand right here and the one Smaller one there is two dollars. She buys hers actually online and has it delivered to us. It's actually cheaper online than it is to go to the supermarket and buy it. And she doesn't have to carry it that way. Okay, we've actually come to the end of the video. Now, I didn't want this to be a long video. It probably is still. And hopefully I can edit out a few bits where I walked around showing some things that weren't gonna really make the video. I do need, to, do need to grab a couple things myself, so I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you so much for watching Traveling with Russell, watching this video and showing a lot of the socially important food items in Russia and the price of them in a Russian typical supermarket and the fact this is Russian owned, so we're not in a German supermarket, we're not in a French supermarket, this is a Russian owned supermarket. So it's important, I think, for the video to try to show some of the prices of course, I've got another 20 other brands of store I could go to and make 20 more videos. So if you like these supermarket videos, let me know in the comments and I can make one of somewhere else. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That's the best way to support the channel. Thumbs ups are always good. Also, a lot of things I've talked about through the video, if you wanna leave a comment about them, let me know what you think of some of the things that you saw and the prices and how it compares to where you live. Obviously, there's a lot of factors involved in that, so, you know, just put that in the comments. Let me know. I put another video for you to watch after this one. If you want to see something else on the channel that you haven't seen before. Also, I'm going to put a link to the Telegram channel. If you want to join me on Telegram, I'm very active there, posting a lot of photos of my day-to-day -day life here in Russia. And the link for that's right there. The video for you to watch is right here after this. And I'm off on another adventure. Bye, everybody.